in this edition of the Mike On Podcast. The long-awaited list of ministerial nominees is here. Without doubt, the need to have ministers, especially in the face of the current unfavorable socioeconomic challenges, has become more pressing. The list came with some intrigues, prominent of which is the nomination of a PDP member, a supposed opposition. Now, what should Nigerians expect from the nominations? Was the list a political compensation as noted by some opinion makers? And does the list have the required spread in expertise and demography? Join Sheon Okimbaloi and his guests on the MyCon podcast as they bring perspectives to this developing story. The 60% of Us series. Hello and welcome to the MyCon. I'm Sean Okimbaloye. On this podcast, we bring you topics that affect young Nigerians directly or indirectly. It is an effort to keep the crucial conversations going with my every weekday show politics uh, today and Sunday politics on Channel Television, creating the impact and setting the tone for national discourse. More and more Nigerians have the opportunity to bear their minds on issues affecting them and on this platform, the mic is on, and you can always have it. Now to the day, uh, to the day's topic. I'm sure you've seen President Tunubu's ministerial nominees. Were you expecting those names? Are you surprised? Are there old ones there on that list? Every leader needs a team that is strong, a very strong team, especially in a crucial moment. In the case of Nigeria's democracy, the president who is the head of government needs to build consistency in policy formulation through substantive input and expertise of his cabinet members. But first, he must go through the process to have a constitutionally backed team in specific terms. Section 147 of the Nigerian Constitution, as amended, states that there shall be such offices of ministers of the government of the Federation as may be established by the president and subsection 2 says, any appointment to the office of the Minister of the Government of the Federation shall, if the nomination of any person to such office is confirmed by the Senate, be made by the President, and the President Tunubu raised against time and sent 28 names of nominees to the Senate for approval. Two days before the stipulated deadline, the list is an interesting mix of former governors, economy, senior lawyers, finance experts, health experts, and some very familiar faces in the political space. These nominees, if and when confirmed, ministers, uh, if and when confirmed as ministers, will be uh, expected to help President Tunubu drive his vision and promises to the Nigerian people. Now, are you confident that the president will deliver with this team? Did they meet your expectations or picture an entirely different list today? On the podcast, I've got an interesting lineup of guests, and uh, we might delve into areas uh, away from um, the uh, the ministerial list because I have a personality that will be coming up on the show also, which some of you consider as perhaps controversial, and a lot of issues that he's spoken about that he's got me in, himself involved will get uh, we might be getting some answers tonight. But let's get our panel on uh, these ministerial leads uh, talking. One man that you know that he speaks his mind, he, he doesn't really care, he just says it the way he feels at the moment he's saying it. The Yade Yonju, um, uh, a rights activist, he joins us live here in our podcast studio. Thank you so much, Deji, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and one of the youngest, uh, uh, perhaps one of the most active uh, in the, the APC as a young person who also ran uh, for the ticket of the APC in the presidential primaries uh mr nicholas felix he joins us also on the podcast thank you so much mr felix for joining us good to be here thank you for having me thank you uh deji you are not a member of the apc you're just a man on your own uh before i go to mr felix who is an insider i will be able to give us some perspectives on what he thinks uh are you disappointed or are you surprised or are you happy with the renewed agenda team of President Tunubu? Well, there is no, no 
nothing removed in the beach, except a few ray of light here and there. And um, if you look at it critically, you discover that I'm extremely disappointed by the involvement of past, past immediate past governors and some po politicians in, on the beach, with the exception of uh, Ade Labu uh, from Oyo, uh, who is a technocrat politician, and uh, maybe uh, Senator Waneno from Cross River. You know, those are the only people that I would say are politicians that I'm not disappointed that they are in, in, included in the list. You know, uh, but bringing former governors, Francis Oerufai is going to constitute new sense for the next four years, which is giving opportunities, eight years. Wiki is going to be dancing all over the place. You know, yes, Wiki is a workaholic. So, and just like Wiki says, agreement is agreement. Maybe as an agreement with Asura Joe and they want to honor the agreement. Notwithstanding, what is Umahi doing in, on the list and several other governors, immediate past governors? It, does, it doesn't make any sense to me. But, the ray of hope on that list is Wale Edun, uh, you know, technocrats to the core. Uh, Pate is on that list, technocrat to the core. Then you have um, someone like um, uh, Latif Agbemi, SAN, you know, a man of, you know, great giant strides in the legal profession. People like that are a source of inspiration to many of us. So those are the little ray of hope. Then the major disappointment on the list is um, Stella Okotete, you know, who ha has been alleged, you know, of forging uh, several documents that she doesn't have any qualification, any paper qualification. All the paper qualifications she has been using, she forged it, you know, which is very unfortunate. It is a national embarrassment to the country. Then you have another man that has been uh, barred by the Supreme Court from holding public office on that list. You know, and several other. Yes, there is a young man, um, honorable member from, uh, I think, Kondo, I guess, honorable Olubumi Ojo, uh, yeah. Tunjojo, 41. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very encouraging and, imp uh, you know, impactful. You know, uh, the, the, the other names on the list is quite discouraging here and there, you know, but uh, again, if you look at it critically, where we are as a nation, you know, and where we ought to be, you know, we need more technocrats. I thought we needed an economist in that team. You know, a solid economist that can come. What about Wale Adun? Yes, Wale Adun alone is not enough. Mm. Our problems are economical. You know, you'll we'll have, we'll have gotten like two or three economists in that team. Somebody to go towards uh, finance, another person to go towards uh, budget and planning, you know, and another person to go towards fund generation, you mm. know, and all that. Because we need to start thinking outside the box. We need to move away from oil dependency because oil is no longer paying NPC is no longer remitting funds to the federation account. So, uh, in the entire list, twenty something people, only three PhD holders. Mm -hmm. In a nation of, you know, uh, eggheads, you know. So for me, I'm extremely dis disappointed. How can the president, uh, if, if you you you, have, you say you want to appoint young people into the cabinet, you go and appoint a young woman that does not have certificate? Do you understand? So. Such a, such a thing. Well, allegedly, happen. because I think the case... The is, Senate the, had passed a definite resolution indicting that woman. Really? Yes. A definite res, res, uh, resolution. I believe that woman should not have passed security screening. The DSS and all the agencies should have spotted it. This was somebody that the Senate passed a resolution and asked Buari to sack her. How can Ashwa that is supposed to be surrounded by egghead make such a mistake? So it's quite embarrassing. They should retrieve that nomination immediately and give it to other young competent people within the APC or even outside the APC as the case may be. Hmm. Let me hear from uh, uh, Mr. Felix. You are an insider. You know what is going on. Uh, you are of the young people uh, block in the APC. Are you... What's your feeling like? Um, does it represent the young... Does the least represent or speak for the young people at all in the APC? Uh, yes, uh, once again, thank you for having me, Sheon. Uh, it's good to be here with you. Uh, if you permit me to just, you know, talk about a few persons on the list. Uh, so far, we, we, we're we commending the Mr. President for a lot of the names that we see here. Uh, if you go through the list, I'll start, ex first of all, with the women. You know, one of the things the President campaigned on, and which some of us really anchored on was, the father, the president is going to have women and youth in his cabinet. And, and looking at the list, when I look at all the, the seven women, at least six of them I know personally, 
the person of Uju. She sees a great pick. I was very excited to see her. And I believe she would do very well in the area of uh, humanitarian affairs. Uh, you look at somebody like Dr. Beta. I don't think there's any department or ministry you you give her that she will not do well. So in terms of the women, the, the president did uh, uh, had a great pick. I see my dear brother talking about Stella uh, Okitete. I think uh, that is something I, I've not heard too much detail about those uh, allegations, but I know her. She's a very smart uh, young lady. We were on the panel together in one event. So I, I believe and I commend the president very much for having at least so far several women in his cabinet. And these women are great. Is it uh, Annette, a very great uh, la uh, young uh, a woman that I know personally? I remember when I went for the screening in APC in the panel, she was the only person giving me a break. Uh, they were so hard. And I still remember the statement she made that uh, Nigeria should watch out for this young man. She was very encouraging and dealing with her, I think uh, she would deliver. Now, let's talk about those others on the list. Uh, somebody like Wiki. Wiki has been in the opposition party. And one of the things also the president talked about was to have a government of national unity. Uh, we're not going to fault the president for getting other people on board. Do I like Wiki? Of course I like Wiki. For only one reason. The man is called Mr. Project. You will not deny the fact that Wiki did a lot. I'm not saying this now because you know he has been nominated. I said it even while he was still a member of a governor, uh, a governor and a member of the PDP. So my talking about Wiki, <laughs> excuse me, has nothing to do with the fact that because the president nominated him, Wiki did well. I would love to see him as the Minister of Works, uh, you know, Works and Housing if they are still together, because I believe he would do so much in that regard. On, on the lighter note, who knew one Wiki and his band? It's always entertaining to see, to hear his band singing and all of that. I think uh, we would love to be entertained too with Wiki. So Wiki is a great pick. Now you're talking about Arufai. Understand this. The president picked the people uh, that he knows are going to work very much with him. So if you see Arufai on the list, you can't discount that Arufai was a great supporter of the president and definitely is going to do well. I'm excited to see somebody like Dele Aleke is uh, going to do very much well. The list is great. When I go through down the list, Ali Pat is 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 somebody that is great. Abu Bakr, the current uh, acting chairman, I know he's going to resign uh, if he has not done so. A great pick. So you go through the list. There are only one or two persons I really cannot talk about. I don't know much about them. Other than that, this is the wonderful pick thus far by the president. My only contribution, my only uh, area is just about the area of the youth. So far, I only seen one youth on the list. For the one year old, uh, uh, is it Ojo? Sorry, I'm looking at the list. Yeah, uh, Olu yes, Olu Olu Ojo. yeah, yeah, yes, as a young, yes, yeah, the there, there, there are a few of them who are young people, though. Uh, Olu no, let, let Ojo, 41, okay. Um, better yes. I do 36 yes. or 37. Uh, Stella Okotete, 38. 38. Um, uh, Anna Tu Musawa, she's in her early 40s, uh, and yes. a few, and a few others also. Who are in their forties? And in fact, interestingly, the, the women. Yeah, go ahead. The women. If you Tunde Ojo is the only young person. The others, uh, uh, Doctor Beta and Stella Okititi and uh, Anetu, they of course they are they are young women, great pick, but they re, they represent the women, not the youth. The other time the the president met with the women, they were there. Two few days ago, the president met with the youth, they were not there. When we had our youth event, they were not there. They were at the women's event. So they represent the women. When we are counting the 35% uh, they requested for, the president honored them as women. I'm talking about more of people like Ojo being there. And the president promised us, he promised the women. He has definitely satisfied the women. He has kept to his promise. For the youth, I know the remaining list that are coming is going to be filled with youth. So, so far, we are very much excited. My only thing is, the remaining 14 or 13 that is left, we want to see more of youth. Not just that they are young, they represent the women category. The women has gotten what they asked for. We, the president promised us nine of for, for the youth. We want to see more of that. And I know, I'm very, very, very confident that the remaining leads that are coming, we're going to see more youth there that will get us more excited. So that's the only thing. But some of these guys here, I think they are, they are great speakers. Okay, so you, you look at it internally, 
because already the names of someone like Adebayo Adelabo from Oyo State, there are a few APC members who are already angry within the uh, within the, the rank and file. Because Adebayo Adelabo was uh, one man who was a governorship as candidate of a court party. Uh, and you have a test, uh, Senator Testi in Fulani, who was the APC governorship candidate. And a lot of them had already uh, speaking, even in P in River State, there are APC yes. members who are, who, are, who are already speaking about the choice of the president and, uh, and uh, the decision to go outside of the party to pick a, a, a ministerial nominee from that state. What are you hearing within your party? There are people who, have, who feel aggrieved, isn't it? Of course, of course, you that is expected, and I'm sure if I was in Rivers, I, I, I would not be pleased too that you pick somebody. But when the president promised government of national unity, where else are we expecting him to get these guys from? You know, he he promised, he promised the women, he promised the youth, he promised government of national unity. Where is he going to get them from? From mass or from the moon? There are states probably these guys were you know part of the campaign or did something along the line maybe after whatever you know however he got there with nigerians at large not just apc can actually say that god the president tinibu promised government of national unity he has fulfilled his promise the women can say president tinibu promised us 35 percent we have gotten so far 25 seven that's great even if the woman join again i think the women will be they are they have gotten it already if there's anybody who should be complaining, it's the youth. And I know Tinibu, President Tinibu cannot forget the youth. And that I can vouch for. I know definitely we're going to have more youth from the leaders that are coming. But in terms of getting angry, he promised. He has fulfilled it. But my confidence is he, he's, he's, he's a man, he's a politician. He's a man who can put people together. I know in no distant time he's going to meet with those who are aggrieved and probably reconcile and, and you know settle them. But it, it, this is what he promised, and he's going to have to keep to his promise. And unfortunately, to them, maybe Rivers and the other two states, uh, that's where it came from. It could have been from another state. Probably if it was from Babuchi, those guys would have been angry. I understand. And we cannot, we, we cannot uh, uh, get angry with them that they are angry uh, or they are aggrieved. We cannot say why they are aggrieved. No, they have the right to be angry. They have the right to complain. But on the other hand, you have to look at it. If you were the president and you promised government of national unity and there are a few persons here and there that you had to pick what will you do i'm quite sure if the president had not picked anybody from any other party and these were all apc i'm quite sure they would have been angry so at the end of the day somebody is going to be in a, in a little way you know not happy but how you handle it from here i think that's what matters and i know the president is going to do a good job in you know getting them together and talking to them but I really cannot fault him for that. Let, let me come to you, Deji. What is important, and I've seen PhD holders who are failures, and I've seen um, HND holders, ND holders, even um, secondary school living certificate persons who have taken up challenges and have done better than those who you imagine that could have, I mean, surprised me with your certificate, but they are never coming through. Do you think that there could be surprises in terms of performance? Because that is very key. I've also seen people with a certificate like Buari who have failed woefully, woefully, very woefully at that. So uh, these things are not uh, a straight jacket thing. You see, basically, there are, it's, it's like getting a mechanic to drive a plane. There are sensitive sectors of our economy that we should not be getting amateurs to run. You know, I, I do not want to find a situation where we find critical people in budget planning who are not professionals and several other issues like that. Health, this sh should be solid. Look at, how can you make minister of education? Look at the last minister of education. And, and you wonder why the nation is, is this way. You wonder why a, a, a student was caught in a mess of forging a result. You know, now a ministerial nominee has been alleged officially by the... Uh, as, the legislative arm of government to have forged her results sheets, you know, her certificate. So these are the issues. For me, uh, another form of disappointment that I saw on the list, just like the way I said there are some ray of hope on that list. Another form of disappointment on, that I saw on that list is that, you know, that list contains a side chick of a former governor. <coughs> that list. 
allegedly. Uh, yes. Y- 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 a, a side chick. You don't have an evidence to yes, that, Yes, a side chick of a former governor is on that list. And I expected that it, Ashwaju should have been able to detect that. Now, unfortunately... How would he be able to of, detect if... Of if, course. If a former governor what, has a chi- side chick. What's go round? What goes go, go, go But it may not be town. true. Because now, these are now, things that are done now, in the in the closet. Now, now the unfortunate thing for the former governor is that he is likely to lose the side chick to Abuja Big Wigs, new big wigs. And now when he loses the side chick to Abuja Big Wigs, you know, what happens to that man? We have to care about people's mental well being, whether you like it or not. So I, I haven't said that on a lighter note. You also have to look at it holistically, that whether you like it or not, just like the last speaker has said. There are too many former governors on that list. We hope that the outstanding list will not have any more former governors. You know, bring in more technocrats and bring in young people, you know, in, to, 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 to the outstanding list. I, and I also feel that, you know, basically, when assigning portfolios for people, Ashwaju should put people that have experience. You, you can, I don't want to be seeing mistakes that Buhari made. When Ashwaju is assigning portfolios, people that were into farming become minister of education, and 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 all those kind of things. The minister of health should be somebody that is knowledgeable. You know, minister of aviation should be someone that you know is a stakeholder that understands that the aviation sector in the country is capable of generating billions of revenue for the country. For instance, if we have a national career in Nigeria, look at what Emirates is generating more, uh, year, year annually. They're generating billions of dollars, British Airways, China Airways. So, if we have a competent minister of aviation, we can actually generate more money than oil can give us because NNPC is no longer remitting money into the federation account, just like I said earlier. Hmm. Over about 50% of those who are on the list are professional politicians. The only thing they've done all their lives is politics. Uh, and there are those who will argue that being in politics, doesn't mean incapacity of knowledge or of character. Uh, you could be in politics and you could really have very good uh, uh, grasp of your field yeah. expertise. Yes, Adelabu is a perfect example. Adelabu, perfect Former example. deputy governor of the Former CBN. Former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. You know, perfect example. Uh, Senator John Owaneno is also another perfect example. Mm. Though politicians, but these two people ha- at least they are not as bad as the other politicians. And my, my urgent appeal to President Malatinubu is that since 50% of these guys are former politicians, they should, President Tinubu should make all of them, the politicians, junior ministers, while he should concentrate on making the technocrats the substantive ministers. Did you see what the article Professor Skayamo wrote yes. and some of his uh, positions yes. on the issue of state uh, ministers? He says it is unconstitutional. Well, that Do is, you think that President uh, President Tinubu will want to toll on uh, toll that lane? No, 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 that is his opinion, and he's entitled, rightly so, to his opinion. But I, I do not see. If, in fact, if President Tinubu makes all the politicians junior ministers, I do not because he, what he was complaining about is that junior ministers have been stampeded. I do not see a former governor being stampeded if he's a junior minister. That is actually one of the, my great way of suggesting that the president should make a junior ministership not be redundant by making the politicians uh, junior ministers. Because politicians are good at checkmating others. So the politicians, if you make Wike a junior minister, or you make Umahi a junior minister, or you make any other person a junior minister, which senior minister will be able to checkmate them? None. If you make Badaru a, a junior minister, which senior minister will be able to checkmate Badaru? You know? So there will be that because the, pol- the politicians have more clout. If the politicians enter the ministry, they will have more supporters in the ministry. So it's a way of balancing the cabinet, in my view. Mm. Um, performance is very key. And there are those who are already suggesting what the situation was under Buhari government and what things are looking like right now and how putting round pegs in round holes. Yes. What, what, what are your views? Because uh, Mr. Felix was, was suggesting portfolios mm. that he thinks that some mm. of these persons are capable of uh, fitting into. You know, personally, personally, you know, uh, I, I quite agree with uh, the, uh, your question around performance. 
The other day, last was it last week, I drove into a petrol station. You know, and I was already missing Buari. Very unfortunately so. It's, un- How? it's How? unthinkable that I, I, I could meet Buari, miss, start missing Buari in such a short period of time. Because as bad as Buari was, on that Buari I was buying one liter of fuel for 160 naira, 175 naira. Now I have to buy the same liter of petrol for 600 and something naira. How, how can you be making any worry? So, indeed, I agree. I align with you that performance is very key and it's very important. And in, in ensuring that performance is key, you see all the technocrats in that cabinet, President, the president must give them first consideration. They must be the people that should be first considered in terms of prime placement in the cabinet. Next will be people that have, people like Adelabo and Senator Owaneno, you know, and maybe the, the young uh, Ojo from Ondo that has been in the oil sector. Then you consider them and try to put them in where they have experience and expertise. The next come the politicians. The next come people. Uh, the, the president must also give uh, 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 adequate attention to young people. The minister of youth should be a young person. Do you understand? The minister of science and technology should be a young person because most old men don't even know how to operate an iPad. So sensitive min- ministries like that should be given to people who, who know something about the ministry. You know, so, so it doesn't look too much like this. Oh, it doesn't. The, the, the regular, it's a normal political compensation and all that. Hmm. Let me go back to uh, Mr. Felix. Uh, you look at it, 28 states alone are captured out of the 30. The Constitution provides that every state of the Federation has to be captured. And those who are in favor of the opinion that, legally speaking, President Bola Tinubu cannot convene a Federal Authority Council meeting until there is a full complement of the Federal uh, the, the, the Cabinet. Um, the 11 states are not captured. Lagos, interestingly, is part of the states that are not captured. Oshun is part of the states that are not captured. And if you look at it, um, the kind of personalities that are captured, what are your expectations? Or what do you think is going on in the minds of the president that we speak? Uh, first of all, you, you know, the, the president is going through these names. And the president is, is trying to make a perfect list. Understand that the lobbying is heavy. The interest, much, from every angle, in and out. And the president has to take his time not just picking somebody because it fits one angle or picking you just because you are young. No, you have to be young and have something to to, to offer. Uh, we're not just picking you because you work for the party. There are millions of us who labored for the party, people who gave, people who did not sleep, all over. So this is not just you labor for the party. You have to, you know, the checklist has to be much for you to be able to make that list. 11 states left, of course, those states are going to be, uh, are going to be filled. But I'm sure the interests are much. The president wants to take his time to make sure he gets it right. If you listen to the chief of staff, he said the president has, you know, checkmate all of this. Um, he's hoping that he did not miss anything. When I heard that statement from him, it tells me that this this was not just a list that was just thrown out there. This was something that was carefully done. Again, I've been an advocate for youth in governance. It's the only reason why I'm here. It's the only reason why I participated. In, in the primaries, even when the nomination was hard. Just to have the youth, we have to be heard. The women now are going to be widely represented. They are going to speak up. They are going to say things that affect the women. Most times, we are not on the table. It will really break my heart if we are not on the table because Nigerians are suffering. The youth, who are those that parents? It's not our old uh, elderly uh, fathers and mothers that are living. It's the youth who are looking for, for greener pasture. So we have to be able to get the youth on board. And like, again, like I said, Knowing the president, for him to have fulfilled his promise for the government of national unity, bringing other parties, he literally cover uh, PDP and the other parties, bringing them on board, you know, satisfy the women also, the youth are left. Again, the young women are not representing the youth, they are representing the women. That's the only thing where I know that we're going to be, you know, hoping to see, and I know we are going to be seeing in the next, uh, uh, whatever list that is that is left. But this must have been done carefully. That's why people are angry. A lot of people, of course, are going to be angry. It's, we're talking about just 44. I'm sure out of thousands of people who are qualified, who want to get on that list, who are connected, 
who wants to get on that list, but he can only pick just 44. And I want to believe he's not going to miss any of this. And it, that's, that's why it took this long uh, to make sure the right people are there. But I mean, you look at again the states that are left out. Interestingly, out of the regions now, um, South South has the highest number of representation on the 28th list, uh, man list. Uh, they have six people. South East have five. Uh, North East has five. North West has four. North Central four. South West four. We do know that out of the 28, statutorily, the president would have to uh, make up and uh, get uh, in his at least 37 names on that ministerial list. 36 state plus the FCT. That's what the law provides. What are your expectations? Why do you think that the president couldn't make up the whole uh, number at once? Yeah, the only thing I could think of is the fact that probably the names on on the, those other states have not truly been verified. For example, I don't think it's just one person from a state who is just there and nobody else to compete with. I'm sure maybe it's a state like Lagos now. You 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 know that there are more uh, uh, interests maybe there. People who are very qualified, those who may have worked with him, and those who labored maybe while he was governor, who he knows their capacity, and he's trying to get them on board. I'm sure right now he's really looking up. It's like having a checklist, a checklist of 15, and say whoever covers the highest, maybe two cover 14. Now, who, what is going to break the ice? You know, conversations like this are going on. You know, uh, uh, I remember in uh, while I was in school, let me just use an example to kind of illustrate what we're talking about. When I got into the nursing program in the United States, I was told with a, with a GPA of 2.50, you get into the nursing program. And I was excited. I got my GPA. My GPA was 3.64. I was saying to myself, uh, I'm, I'm going to be the first person on this list. I've already exceeded the mark. At the end of the day, I had it was only space for 80. And over 400 people got four points. And they only have space for just 80 people. When I had 400 people, I was like, wow. I never knew, you know, I didn't attend the rotation, so I didn't get much of the information. Now, the question is, how do you admit 400 people who got four points into a space of 80? Now, they started bringing out that recommendation. Whoever went to this school before, whoever did uh, uh, healthcare before, whoever, they started bringing up other things just to be able to check me. So that's one of the things you'll be seeing now. And that's, I believe that's why a state like Lagos, I wasn't surprised. That's where he has been. Of course, the interest would be more the people who are qualified. Now you have to be able to look at it carefully, you know, and get the, the, the right person there. Again, you, you, you know me, Shemo, this is my, what I've always stood for. We're expecting more youth. I'm hoping to see youth. I don't care. There are, there are youth that are qualified. We have youth who are succeeding. That's why I, we don't want to hear that uh, you don't have experience. You know, many of us have succeeded. Thousands of youth in Nigeria. We are excelling in the entertainment industry. We are making it in every other firm. So in every other area, the youth are qualified. We want to get them aboard. But I could just see the arrangement for you to have, you know, satisfied the government of national unity. You bring in other parties. You brought all the women at the same time. I'm sure the next list will be so surprising. And we'll start jubilating and celebrating that. He has covered all the bases. The youth are there. The women are there. You know, other parties are there. Now it's time to fill the, the, the position, which I think is also going to be very critical. That's why I looked, I, I mentioned a few names that I know I can recommend. Uju, we do excellently well as uh, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. Wiki, you and I know, if nothing else, Wiki should not miss works. He will do well. We need our own construction. We need project. We need things going on. He did it. I know he's going to do well. I don't know any other thing we are going to give him. That's the area I know we're going to tolerate all his, uh, I don't want to use a negative word, all his, uh, uh, I don't want to say news and so his, his drama. We're going to tolerate it because we're going to see Wiki working, getting the job done. So there are a few other persons, I believe, the president will get it right. Understand, if the president happened to miss one or two, we're not going to crucify him because he's, he's human just like us. I'm sure you understand the pressure that is going on now just by this list coming out. So far, we, are, we applaud the president. And the Nigerian youth are just hopeful and waiting for for the next list to be out, knowing fully well that uh, we'll be well represented there. Mm. There is a conversation we'll be having very shortly. But before we get into that conversation, DG, um, it's just 60-something days into the life of this new government. Do you have any kind of expectation or hope that this government is going to do well? Especially now, because it cannot run the race alone. 
he has to get a team. Now we are we are looking at what his team could look like. Does it give you any sense as a Nigerian that we might just get it right as a country? Well, sincerely speaking, um, I wouldn't say uh, I'm confident that the government will do well. But one thing I'm sure of is that this president has the political will uh, to do well. Whether the government will do well is another thing. And the reason why I say the president has the political will to do well is the appointment of Nuri Badu as NSA. If you look at that appointment, that position has been reserved from time immemorial for ex-generals, ex-people that have served in the army. And we saw, when it was close to him appointing Nuri Badu, we saw Abu Salam going to the villa to see the president. For many of us that are students of politics, we know that many of that was a strategic move to block the appointment of Nuri Badu. We also saw or heard from the great vine that a lot of pressure was put on him by ex-leaders who are military leaders in the country, not to give Nuri Badu that position. So he went ahead and he gave Nuri Badu because he felt uh, we've been having retired military people in that position. Nothing has been achieved. All we have been witnessing is more insecurity and corruption. That office has been turned to office for food for the boys. So he, he showed commitment and the goodwill by stamping his feet. And all what we need to get Nigeria working again is the, that, is the political will. And that was what Buari lacked for the entire eight years of his administration. It was them Tunde Sabu that were running the government. You know, my hope for this Buhari administration is that, uh, for this Tinubu administration is that he should not allow a, 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 a new cabal to hijack his government. He must be in charge from beginning to the end because that is the only way. Because Nigeria is a sick nation in intensive care unit. And so the president must be up and doing and the president must be determined to get the country working. The president must show courage and the president must show political will. What you need to get Nigeria working is political will. He demonstrated that by appointing uh, Nuri Badu as NSA. Now it is time for him now to put uh, square peg in square holes, uh, app appoint portfolios, move fast, because I don't know why it took this long to, uh, to announce the ministers. He promised during the campaign that he was going to, I think there was an interview, they asked him, he said, what will you do if you become president? He said, day one, hit the ground running. Day two, keep running. Day three, I didn't see that in the last 60 days. The man was jacking, jacking like an old vehicle, you know. So he has not shown that will, you know, to hit the ground running like he promised. But like I commended him on the new Ribadu uh, appointment, he got it right. So he, he needs to apply such will, you know, throughout the, his term as president. Uh, DG, uh, I don't know you, Mr. Nicholas Felix. Just give me a moment. Uh, we need to bring in a conversation that I've been looking forward to have with um, uh, Mr. Asari Dokubo, uh, who is very well known for his, uh, uh, his uh, outspokenness about some issues. So recently, he's been in the news for a lot of issues, things that he has said about the security of the country, his meeting with President Bola Tinobu, uh, the state of security in the southeast and in the south-south region of the country. And he joins us virtually live on the podcast. It's good to see you, Elijah Asari Dokubo. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, let me begin. Uh, I mean, I, I have a feeling that you're a good friend of the president. So let me get your view about the cabinet uh, list, the ministerial nominee list that the president just sent to the Senate. What do you make of it? I've seen the list. Um, I don't know most of the people on the list. I only know. Uh, I've only heard of some of the ex governors, a state governor. I know that's through LO5. I know Wike, the governor of River State. Uh, most of the other people, I know that I've read so much. I've read so much about the woman leader of uh, 
APC. I totally disagree with your, one of your panelists who was talking of technocrats, PhD holders, and uh, so forth. I think that people should not, there should not be tyranny of certificated people. This country belongs to all Nigerians. A truck pusher, a plumber, a meirua, a meidoya, a fisherman, a farmer. It belongs to all the people of Nigeria. And they all, there's universal adult suffrage in Nigeria, where when you are 10, 18 years, you are going to vote. And once you start voting, you also have the right and access to all institutions of government. We should not practice apartheid. If you have a PhD, you have it for If you have a PhD, you have it for yourself. If you have whatever degree, whatever this thing, you have it for yourself. And somebody should not be discriminated. This is apartheid. And it should not be allowed. As far as I'm concerned. In but, the first republic, but I'll let you how many PhD yeah. holders yeah. held up? Yeah, but, but but you imagine that uh, yeah uh, you, you can imagine that uh, being a cabinet member uh, is, is a role that is that needs a lot of expertise because you're going to be in charge of sectors that are directly impacting on the lives and the livelihood of the people so your expertise your your capacity to deliver is based on your knowledge that you have on such a sector don't you think that we needed to get the best of the best in each of the sector to lead this country in that regard. What is the criteria? What is the what is the criteria to measure the best of the best? From the from uh, Yakubu Gowan administration, we have had technocrats in government. What have we achieved? We have we have moved from a third world country to a country that cannot even be classified. Maybe we're in a last world country now. We have been having technocrats in different fields in Nigeria, and they are the worst offenders. They are the most corrupt people. So to say we need expertise, expertise has what? What has that achieved for us? What we need are patriotic people, people who are patriotic, people who have passion for the country, people who want the country to succeed. I just came back from Saudi Arabia, and you see miracle and magic and everything that is going on. And they don't speak the cheap language of this, that, technocrat, this, that. For a country to succeed, go to Singapore, go to all these places, they need patriotic and passionate people, people who have passion for the country. And once you have passion for the country, whatever office you are put in, you will be able, you are passion, you'll be passion driven, you'll be patriotic driven. And that is what we need. Not to talk, not to say I what we we have we have professors as ministers of health. How is our health sector? We have had professors as ministers of power. How is our power sector? We have had professors as ministers of petroleum. How is our petroleum sector? We should not be bringing this argument that, as far as I'm concerned, has no meaning. But let me look at the list. Let me take Omai was governor. I don't know the standard that people use in judging performance. My friend was saying that we, we can say workaholic. Today, the poverty index in Nigeria just came out. River State is top in the South South. The poverty index just came out. You, you can go to the social media. And River State is top. And River State had budgeted more money than all the South South states. Is it concrete and gravels and sand that makes a governor successful? So flyovers are what makes a government successful. I would want you to travel to River State and visit the local government at joining Port Harcourt and Obiapo and see things for yourself. Let us not stay far and start to be to, to, to give pass marks to people. 
I would totally disagree with that. But did we get married being a minister? I would say absolutely. He married being a minister. We can merit being a minister. The reason being that there are several considerations to become a minister. We can stake everything in the uh, at the last minute for Ahmed Bola Tinibu. And it will be wrong not to reward people who stood by you. This election that we had is the most tumultuous, the most volatile election. And Ahmed Tinibu was the most malign, the most abused, and all sorts of things. So if, if somebody put everything at stake and stood by him, even if it is me, I will reward him, not based on past performance. For every his past performance will speak for him in Abuja. At least he tried. Abuja was better off when he was a minister. I don't know how Kaduna looks like now. I've not been to Kaduna in ages. But if we are going to uh, judge Erufai, uh, we have to judge him by his performance in Abuja. I was going to Abuja. I knew Abuja, and he performed very well. And since Erufai left Abuja, Abuja had gone to sleep. And I was hearing the other fellow talking about youths. When you talk about youths, they are not just males. Youths are women, girls, boys, uh, female youth, and male youth. I on the list I saw 36, I saw 37, I saw 38. So youths have been from both genders have been represented. And I think that youths are one of the biggest problems of, of, of Africa. Jews are one of the biggest problems of Africa. An old man of 80 is not looking to buy Lamborghini. He's not looking to buy uh, all sorts of these vehicles. He's not looking for them. It is the young people that want to go to nightclub, yeah. that want to go and flex, that you. want to go and do all sorts of things. Yeah. Let me, let so me... talking about youth yeah. trying to let, let me take you away quickly. Trying to promote yeah. youth over and above order as mm. if corruption ends, starts and ends with older people. I, I don't believe that. Let me take a, uh, uh, you away from if, uh, this issue of the, the president's uh, ministerial nominees for a moment. There are a few things that, uh, that caught the attention of uh, Nigerians. A lot of people have been critical about your position on some of these issues. But let me ask you... Um, because there are those who think that um, your, your meeting with the president has suddenly given you another kind of personality in the, in the polity that has, uh, according to some of your critics, emboldened you to say some of the things that you have said. First and foremost, you raised the curiosity of a lot of Nigerians when you visited the Aso Rock Villa and got the attention when you dropped the bombshell on the issue of oil theft. Since you visited the president, have you noticed anything different from uh, the initial observation you made? I, since I visited the president, I've seen an NBC uh, working with our contractors. I've seen it on, on, uh, on social media and on print media. But to be very frank, my dear brother, if you are doing, you, you, Channel Television that you work for, Jay, went and saw an oil terminal about three kilometers length, constructed uh, pipes into the ocean. <laughs> we have drones. We are not living in a world where a native doctor will be, will be looking at his mirror. We don't have drones. We have satellites in, in space. We have planes. We have surveillance planes. So did they build that something that uh, Channel Jones in one day? Did they build it in one day or they build it in two days? Is it truth? The truth. 
the, mo the, the biggest poison in Nigeria is the truth. Nobody can venture to go and take one spoon of oil anywhere without the connivance of the military. Because before you go, you must go and give military men guarding this facility. You have to pay them before you can go and take one spoon of oil. Everybody knows it. It's not because I saw the president. I'm surprised. Shemu, you are saying this. I've been in your station before. You've interviewed me before for you to say that it was because why is this a cheap black man against Ahmed Bolatini? It has nothing to do with Ahmed Bolatini. Mm. This is why I talk. This is why I always talk. This is why I will always talk. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, until we accept the truth, See, Nigeria is losing billions. But 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 I like it. You heard what billions because of you, you heard what the military said in their response. They said if you have names of those military men that you are talking about, you should name them. And they say that it was I, just a blackmail on want, them. Do I work with the military? That is a cheap blackmail. Do I work with the military? Are we not seeing it? You see big uh, vessel. Just now at the two bridge, you saw a big vessel there. What is a big vessel doing in the creek of a do uh, by a two bridge in that shallow creek? What is that big vessel doing there? Shall we know the truth now? I'm not employed by the military. I would like go and so if a military man is coming, he remove his staff. I will now uh, do uh, this thing. Uh, Clairvoyancy and uh, put his name there. There are military men, they know themselves. Even recently, a military man, a military men were arrested by by military men themselves at Abonima in Akukta local government because of bunkering activities. So these are not the issues that we should talk. These are facts and truth. We didn't say all military. We said a few, my, listen to my, my statement, a few bad eggs who feel that they have people on top to protect them, that they won't perpetuate this act against the state. I come from an oil producing community. I want to bring an helicopter. Come, let us fly around OML. Let us fly around OML 18 and uh, see what is happening. Even just today, just today, I just received a text message from somebody as I'm talking. Just today, at Bukuma Creek, military men were collecting money from somebody just sent me. Uh, were collecting money from loaded uh, boats at Bukuma Creek, you know, uh, OML 18. Somebody just uh, sent me a text in my other phone. Just now, as I'm talking. Let me, so let me, these yeah, things yeah. So are not what. Yeah, I have a few questions for you. Do you have oh. an army of your own that you control? I don't have an army, but I have a private military company that was engaged by the government of Nigerian state. And I've been doing the work for the Nigerian state. Private military companies exist all over the world. We have Blackwaters, we have Wagner, we have so many private military companies. They are not even new to Nigeria. The but, only thing new is that maybe a Nigerian is now providing the same services that South African and Belarusians and other people provided to fight Boko Haram. And this thing, it was on BBC. There was a BBC documentary on South African mercenaries that were in Nigeria, fought in Nigeria. And I listened to the interview where they said they were even sabotaged by the military when they were here. So I have a private military company and that is engaged by the government and we fought. And we fought. We are fighting side by side with the Nigerian military in many places. 
places like Kaduna, Abuja, or where? Where are these places? In Niger, in Plateau, in Imo, in Abia, and in part of River State. We were in Anambra before. We pulled, we, we, they pulled us out of Anambra. We were in Plateau, and we were doing a good job. We are being commended by all the host communities. You can go to this community. You can go to Wase, you can go to Baga, you can go to Chiroro, you can go to the Kaduna Abuja Road. We are doing fine. And we are being commended. What is the name of this, your military group? It's... Sorry, it seems your connection, we lost your connection. Can you see, hear me? Elijah Dekubo, can you hear me? It's not a military. Okay. Is it, we're it's having, not. yeah, we're having issues with the connection. But can you hear me now? Yes, the company, the company is called Royal Future. Okay. Services. Okay. So, um, I mean, th there are a lot of issues that those who are very critical about your position, about your stance. Um, in fact, there are those who believe that your statements are more or less a diatribe on the ego people and the manner in which you've spoken about the ego people. Do you have any kind of apologies to make to the ego race who believe that you may have made some statement that I don't have to any them? apology to any. I don't have any apology to anybody. I am an Igbo man from Abam. I have Igbo blood flowing in my vein. I only speak the truth. They brought first this bunch of liars. They brought a video made on the 29th of September. Check that uh, broadcast. 29th of September, 2002. And it was not, it has nothing to do with Igbo people. I was replying to a Calabari person who came to my wall to ask. ask me. <laughs> who came to my wall? to insult me when I was doing a broadcast. And I was replying to him, listen to that. I say, this Calabari people own it. It's not every Calabari man that says it's Calabari that is Calabari. And he says, I'm causing problem between Igbos. And... I said, the Igbos you are talking about, I don't know them. This Igbos, he's talking about IPOB, ESN. I don't have problem with majority of Igbos. I am married to an Igbo woman from the same Abam area. I am I am from Opom. I am an Abam man. In my DNA, maybe 70% is Igbo. I have no apology to anybody for speaking the truth. And that my father bought them as slaves and sold them, which is true. But don't you it's, think that some of these statements might be offensive? Don't, don't you think that some of these might be offensive? To an the, entire the truth race. is always offensive. The truth is always offensive. It's true. My father bought them as slaves and sold them. There was what is called the transatlantic slave trade. And my fathers were in the forefront of that transatlantic slave trade. And it was because they were selling. They were not selling the jobs. They were not selling no gunnies. They were not selling eggs. They were selling evils. But I mean, in this age and time, saying it's that true. kind of saying that kind of thing, you know, it could be offensive. See, it, it, could be, to it could be it could be a dark trap taken too far. Like the Cuba. An evil man comes to my wall and call me a bitch. An evil man comes to my wall and call me a terrorist. Yeah, so, 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 so. An evil man called me, come to my wife. I've never been convicted and called me a criminal. 
but, but how does that translate to reinforcing the whole of Igbo people? How does that translate? Because one Igbo man calls. So why can't Igbo people? Why why shut up your mouth? Why, 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 will, why, why will why why will that now become a, a thing that all Igbo people now become victims of? Why will why will that become a thing that that all Igbo people will now be punished for? Why? Or then they should caution their Igbos that are running around abusing people. They should caution Igbos that are running around causing problems for them. If they don't caution those evils, then others have the right of reply. Others have the right of retaliation. Your, your statement about uh, the issue of uh, um, sit at home, you said you were in the Southeast at some point. Uh, what do you think may have, because, uh, I mean, allegedly we're hearing now that um, Enamdi Kano has sent a message out uh, to um, Simon Ekba. What do you think is likely to be a solution? And you have spoken up about it. This, this your statement has also angered a few people in the southeast. Um, my my channel, my my take is this: Enam Dekanu is no longer relevant in the question in the southeast. I said it in my interview. Simeon Ekpa has taken over from Enam Dekanu. And we have to deal with that. Enam the Kano had to face the consequences of his actions. He has to go through like us who went through uh, the courts. He has to go through the rule of law. He has to he, he has to be, be prosecuted. And he, if he's found innocent, then he can be discharged and acquitted. But to say that it should be released after calling people to kill Tinibu, Tinibu children, burn Tinibu businesses, at least he said that. We have the broker. He said that on all. He, 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 he commanded people to kill. He put an 100 million bounty on Wicked's head. And that it should get, uh, bring Wicked to him dead or alive. So. These are all the things that Inam Dekanu did. He weaponized people to attack and kill and maim and destroy. He did that. So he's no longer in control. Ekpa has come out that sit that home will continue. So what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you what do you what do you think is the solution? Happened. What do you think is the solution? The solution is is let us be sincere with ourselves. There should be a sincere approach. There should be town hall meetings of all the people. The Igbo should be able to come out and speak. They should not be living in denial that a great evil is happening in Igbo land. An undeclared war is happening in Igbo land. Igbos are killing Igbos. Igbos are eating Igbos. Igbos are committing heinous crime against their fellow Igbos. And I am not the only person saying it. Ijele is saying it. The other lady is saying it. And more people are coming. They are putting out their voices and they are saying this thing as they are. So let us be courageous enough to come. Let us call on those who are ready to repent and leave the forest, their camps and all, and come out. And all those who are not ready to repent and come out and change and be integrated into society should be crushed. Let me let me let me take you up on this. Uh, a group called the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, uh, they called for your arrest, and uh, that uh, over your suspected link to the violent phenomenon of unknown gunmen in the southeast. How do you react to this? I don't want to rely. It's part of the evil gimmick of living in denial. Or uh, 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 Umbiko, Emmanuel Umbiko is an Igbo man. Igbos are always living in denial. 1966, school, they are denying. They, everything, what everybody knows, the Igbos always deny. The Igbos are the people who put us in this mess. We had a federation of five federating units, the federal government and four regions. 
he wrongly overthrew, brought the 21 and made sure that we had a crude unitary system of government. That is what is plaguing Nigeria today. That is what led to the Biafran War that led to the death of uh, millions of people, the job people, or, uh, Ogoni people, uh, Ishakri people, uh, Robo people, ethnic people, the people, people, including Ibo people. So, and they, they, they want to coerce everybody. They want to bully everybody to accept the distortion and embellishment of known facts. And this is not possible. We will not accept it. We will continue to say the truth. We will continue to move. We are begging General, uh, we, are, we are begging the whole Nigerian and President Ahmed Bola Tinibu, please let the Igbo go. We don't want this vicious circle again. No, Give them no, a that, referendum. That, that let is, them go. That is a very strong statement against the position of the Nigerian. Yes, so let them go now. We don't you, want it. No, they said they want to go. I, 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 I like you, Dr. Bob. That's an, extreme, that's an extreme thought that you're sharing about a five state in a major... I have told you before that me, I'm an extremist. I don't pretend. I'm an extremist. People say they want to go. Why are we forcing them to remain? But they but, should go. But that, do, that may not represent the, 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 the feeling of an entire people, of an entire region of the country. If just a few then, people... Oh, I did not... In, uh, uh, our nation, our nation in the Igbo is supposed to be speaking for all Igbos. They are supporting in Amdekano. And what is in Amdekano asking for? Igbo exit. So if on our name, the Indi Igbo uh, is the APS organization of Igbo people, and they are demanding, and they are supporting Inam Dekano, and Inam Dekano is... We're losing connection with you yet again. I don't know if you're still with us. I like your Kuba. Can you hear me? Oh, no. I'm not sure it's, uh, you can hear the, the the connection just got totally. Uh, we have an outage on his connection there. It's just to have a few more connections. I mean, a few more questions there. We have love to. Uh, through at him, but but Deji, what what are your views on? Uh, okay, you are back now. I'll so you... quickly, if I have the floor. Okay, okay, Mister Mister Philip. Yeah. All right. I wish you can hear me. I, just I can hear to, you. To... I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. I think uh, Alaji is back. I just wanted to quickly throw in in that the youth of Nigeria are not the problem. Uh, yes, we do understand that. Uh, youths, we have our own nature. And uh, even our fathers, when they were young like us, they had the same. There's age, just like a little child who is one year old. When the child go and pee on himself or herself when he sleep, you don't crucify the child and say, why are you peeing? That's what they do when they are one year old. So uh, whatever nature the youth might have, this is the this is it. Uh, probably when we get to our 70s and our 80s, we won't be, you know, act like that. So what every father would do is to nurture the, the child and to care for them. Luckily, we have a president who love the youth, who appreciate the youth. I don't know if you watch the 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 clip of when uh, Dayo Israel, the youth leader of APC, when he finished speaking. The way the president was clapping, I don't think he clapped when the women went there. I don't think he clapped when every, any other person went there. You could see the president really clapping because the president appreciate the youth. So we are not the problem. Any youth out there who want to buy a Lamborghini, if you have money to buy 10, please buy. It's our nature. When you're old, you can't eat, drive Lamborghini. Now that you're young, drive all the Lamborghinis you want to drive. Yes, I would just like to chip in as well that um, majority of the things that Asari has accused Inam Dekano of, of doing, he, he did worse when he was fighting for what he believed in. He did worse. Even a few days ago, he threatened the sitting governor, Governor Sim Fubara of River State. He threatened him. The videos are, are, are all over the internet. So, my problem with people like Asari is that what is the they, they, it's, it's like they do what? not, it's like they, they, they always forget history. I tried to and again, what again, wh whether you like it or not, what did as, he, Asari said I that that people without certificate should be the one who should be running the economy of the country. Will he allow someone with, will he allow a truck pusher to conduct a medical surgery on him? Him, if he goes to a public hospital. 
Will he allow a truck pusher to drive a plane that is a passenger on? Haven't said that. Because for me, uh, he, when he was making a remark, and, 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 I inter and, and I interjected, you know, when, 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 when I interjected, he said, shut up. I will, I will not go into the gutters with him. He can be twerking for Tinubu all he likes. Uh, he's very happy now because Tinubu has invited him to the villa. They even gave him the the chamber to address the press. So he's happy. He's, he's twerking for Ashwaju now. He's, he, 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 he's wishing. His wish is that his, his wish is that they will give him his his his, his, his wish his wish is that his wish is that they will give him Tompolo's job so that he will begin to do Tompolo's job. But all the twerking that he's twerking and shaking bum bum for Tinubu now, uh, that, that's all his wish. And I don't blame him. It is Tinubu that I blame. Look at it is it is, it is Tinubu that I blame. That Tinubu is now openly endorsing criminality. Tinubu can be meeting bad boys at night. There's nothing wrong in Tinubu meeting bad boys at night. But making it a concept for the is very detestful. It's despicable. How can how can this man sit down in his house and be threatening a, a sitting governor? Because the governor simply told him that his boys are the one who are creating the insecurity problem in River State. Again. Several groups in Imo State have, 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 have come. Have Several have groups in Imo State, State have come to say it is his boys in Imo that are killing people as unknown gunmen in Imo. Just like the way you have raised that issue, the way you have raised this issue now, of the NGO, of the NGO that said it is boys, it is Asari's, it is Asari's militia that are killing people in Imo. Allow Alaji Asari to to respond. Alaji, uh, speak to the issue raised about the Rivers Governor and your statement about. Uh, Governor Fubara, uh, where you were quoted to, I mean, where you were, you, you were seen in a video saying that Boko Haram will be a child's play. What did you mean? Because it's interpreted and it's inferred that you were actually threatening a sitting governor. Can you hear me? Catholic. Hello, can you hear me? Please go ahead. Alaji de Kubo. Yes, thank you. Oh, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right. So I was asked, I didn't know if you get my question. You were, you were there was a video that went viral, that surfaced on the internet, uh, where you uh, you were seen saying that whatever happened with Boko Haram would be. A child's play, making reference to Governor Fubara of River State, and there are those who have inferred that you are actually threatening a sitting governor. What exactly were you up to in that video? You see, I wonder whether we live in a constitu constitutional government. We live in a country where there is constitution. Does the constitution give a sitting governor the right? to order for the death and the killing and violence against citizens of, the, of his own state, does the constitution give a sitting governor that right? Is this the sort of educated people we have who feel that a sitting governor have all the power, all the mind to do whatever he likes? I was in Saudi Arabia the new GOC visited uh, Fubara. The GOC went out of its way. I have told you that my company, Royal Fuji, was for the government of this country. We are not illegally bearing arms. Emo Akalabari Road, which Seminar uh, Fubara knows, was unsafe for years. My people who have been killed every day, every day. And the people have been demonstrating. Maybe you won't say that, that they were doing all these things. In doing all these things, I came to the rescue last year. And since I came, there has not been one incident of kidnapping. There has not been one incident of death. There has not been one incident of armed robbery for over one year. 
the governor himself knows. His people knows. His government is constructing a road there. Nobody had been kidnapped. Now, we might have political difference. During the cause of his campaign, two days to the election, Cobra called me that he wants to see me. I said, sorry, I won't see you. Come and see. If you want, you are the one who wants to see me. Come and see me. And I told him, I said, look, nobody will fight. Do you know a job man will fight? This is an enjoy your contest. Nobody will fight. Everybody knows my position, that I was supporting Tony Cole. And I cannot just walk and go and see this, this thing. Then he came. When he became governor, he, he said he declared River State a Christian state. And I told him, sorry, politely, that River State is not a Christian state. This man knows very right well. One of the serving local government chairmen under him, Chidi Lloyd, has come out to say openly that maybe the governor was not properly briefed. And he's not from Calabar, he's from Emoa. It's Emoa Calabar Road. Now, because of politics, because maybe his Oga, yes, or Wiki, had a running battle with me for four uh, years. And he's ordering the GOC that had just come to attack me and kill me, to attack the people. So if the GOC is ordering the GOC to attack and kill me, kill my people, the GOC himself knows that our people are assets. We are federal government assets. We are doing work for federal government. These are not the things that ought to be discussed in the public. But if you watch us, then we will. I am not the lamb that will be taken to the slaughter and I will not open my mouth. It's not about how much blood in you. Then he came, he's a disgrace, he's this, he's that. He's a disgrace. When Belarusians were here fighting Boko Haram, was it a disgrace? Why did he not say it? When South Africans were here fighting Boko Haram, why did he not say it? Why should my own company fighting insurgents and criminal elements engaged by the government of the Nigerian state be an aberration. I have never committed a crime. I was tried for treason from the lower court to the Supreme Court. I, I, the no court convicted me. So if a governor says that they should come and kill me, so when they kill me, do you know how Boko Haram started? Boko Haram started because of motorcycle element. They were going to funeral and they were attacked because they were not wearing helmet. And at the end of the day, almost how many years, we are still grappling with the effect of that stupid action. Somebody stays and said, go and kill these people. Go and raid them. But meanwhile, so many people in the army are hungry, in the military are hungry, that I have exposed them. I've closed where they are eating, and so we are going to take this. Please, I did not go there to take Tompolo's contract. I did not go there. This man is very cheap. You talk cheap. I did not go there to take Tompolo's contract. I have enough. So why I'm you, a Muslim. Why are you twerking I'm so satisfied. Hard, why are you twerking so God hard? Is. You are twerking too much. You are twerking too much for. Dagaban, you are twerking too much. Twerking, you are twerking, you are so twerking much too much. much. You are twerking too much. Twerking so much even even much. the Jagaban you are twerking I'm for, people. even the Jagaban you are twerking for will not respect you yeah, like this. He will, he will respect he, Tompolo he, more. He, he, he is quiet and silent. You are twerking too much, sir. Because I will be the first person. I brought Tompolo into it because I brought Tompolo into it. I brought Tompolo into the argument is because you are doing you are you are you are doing as if you want to take over Tompolo's job. That's why I brought Tompolo into the conversation. And and again, Sheung, it is important to say it is important to say Sheung, that it whether you look to the left or you look to the right. You will see that yeah. I, I, someone like me, I'll be the first but person to, to, to shout to high heaven you know, if it is true that Simfabo was has been threatening as these people. I'll be the first person to even lead the protest in this country to condemn him. But there's no evidence to that effect. 
I don't there is you. evidence to the fact that Asari is telling the governor, the city governor, and telling him support in his own words. He said if you do anyhow, you will see anyhow. He said it, and he also said that he will create yes, an army you more, 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 more than you will see anyhow. And it is because it is because Tinubu has endorsed, has seen him. Now, that's why he's he is tweaking this much. Yeah, yes, and right. again, yeah. again, I agree with Asari on the issue of him saying. It is the military men that are behind the oil bunker. I agree with him. He's telling the truth. Because there is no way in this, it's not even possible in this world that they'll be doing bunkering in Nigeria and the military are not in the know. Of course they're in the know. Whenever I see truth, I recognize truth and I acknowledge truth. What Asari has said on that in that regard is the truth. Everybody in the military, we all talk to them. They confirm to us and reconfirm to us that the military, majority of them, they are the ones that are colluding with the oil bomb crash. So, if President Tinubu wants to get this right, he must make sure that people like Asari, they should tell him. They should tell him how to get those people, those people in the military who are sabotaging right. the oil yes, sector. Gentlemen, I want us to anchor on this. Alaji, uh, if you can uh, tell us, when you said in that video, if you do any uh, you see any uh, you do any uh, you you collect Woto Woto, that, those statements have been inferred to mean that you are threatening violence against the state, against the state in governor. Is that what you mean? If that, if that is not what you meant, would you be able to say uh, you're sorry about that statement and you mean peace for the people of River State? I, have, I, 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 don't, I cannot mean that. Like I said, I don't have any problem with the governor of River State. See, I'm a Muslim. It is God that gives power. It is God that takes power. It is God that makes somebody rich. It is God that debates somebody and makes somebody poor. I am a Muslim that totally believes in that. I've been a Muslim for 35 years. Since 17th of September 1988, I've been a Muslim. Against all odds, I have nothing. God, if God did not approve sin, Seminilaya will not be governed. And as far as I'm concerned, I have nothing against it. Let me tell you this. Do you know why government engaged me today to be doing my job, to be doing the job I'm doing? We can, uh, enough the canoe put a bounty on Wicked's head for whatever reason, because Wicked said, don't bring your seat at home to River State. River State is not Igbo. And he put a bounty on his head. And I went out on my own. Myself and Wicked were not on talking terms. I went out on my own, volunteered, went side by side with the military, went side by side with the military, and went to Oyibo and fought there and eliminated them. The government appreciated the fact that I decided to volunteer. I was not paid a couple. I did not go to the weekend. If today that same challenge come to reverse people, that an individual would sit somewhere and put a bounty on the head of a governor, whether whatever claim would be, if Wiki had been killed, had been had been adopted by ESN people, which was a possibility, the shame will be on all river. I sorry there, no be mountain wrong. At the end of the day, we stood our ground. If that sort of thing. If somebody threatens sin, I will stand by him. I don't have anything against sin. I don't have anything that for me as a human being will, will affect the interests of rivers. I have employed rivers people. I have sent rivers people in my small way from the small catch I have. I want peace for rivers. I want progress for rivers. I want proper development for River State. That is what I want for River State. And anybody construe 
free my statement to mean that I want to kill River State Governor, I want to have problem with it. That person is the one that wants to kill the governor of River State. Um, we lost connection. I, I want us to wrap up now uh, with the conversation. Let me go to Nicholas Felix. Uh, on a fun, final note, um, this conversation started with um, looking at President Tinubu's uh, cabinet and the list that has been uh, up. And if you look at our conversation with Mr. Sarido Kubo and some of the things that have emerged and what they just said, how would you wrap up tonight? Your final thoughts? Okay, just uh, three things. Like I said, so far the president has done a good job, you know, uh, meeting the needs and the, the list is great. We're just asking for more and hoping that the next list will have a lot of youth there. And number two, I, I really wanted to quickly uh, speak to uh, my dear brother there, DG. You know, he's one, he's one uh, brother I really respect, an activist. We need people like you to be able to, to speak up for the those who don't have a voice. But uh, I don't think it's right and fair to be accusing the president for you know, meeting with uh, Asari Dokubo. He, he's the president of the country. Whether good or bad, he's still the president of Nigeria. So if you gave an audience to him, I, I don't think that's endorsing uh, uh, criminality or whatever he may do. So uh, most times I hear you say this. Sometimes people come on your show and they start saying things. Uh, when, when they come on your show and they start saying things, sometimes you guys will have to explain that this opinion is, is, is theirs does not affect or is not in any way the opinion of China's television. So if the president gave uh, uh, him audience, doesn't mean he's endorsing. So I think that's not a good allegation. If IPOB decide, the group IPOB decided they want to see Mr. President, I'm very sure he's going to give them audience. And if you give them audience, that doesn't mean now uh, he's signing them to, to go. If I may end up with this, uh, Mr. Asari, Alaji Asari Dokubo asking the, the Igbos to go. The Igbos are purely Nigerians and they are here to stay. We are not letting any Igbo go. They are part of us in this country. We are one one nation. There may be disagreement, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we have a president who will listen and be able to see how they can put an end to the issue of the IPOB. So, but uh, please, when we are accusing, I love I love fair criticism. When you criticize what is right for you know for the government, the administration to sit up. When it becomes something that is not fair, especially for an administration like this that I belong to. We have to be able to speak up that the president meeting with Alaji Asari Dokubo is not in any way wrong on his part. You know, he gave him audience, and anybody who wants to go, uh, I'm sure, Deji, if you if you ask for a meeting, that you want to meet with the president, I'm sure he's going to give you audience. I want to Does that mean that those of us who are APC members will be never, accusing my brother? Even uh, with no, a no, gun you, to you my head, I'll never ask for a meeting. Even with a gun to no, my head. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying generally, if he grants you audience, it doesn't mean now somebody will come out. My, uh, my, my brother, excuse me, my brother. So, sorry. The so, point sorry. is, let's not just sorry. accuse the president sorry, of doing the job. As... Sorry for interjecting. My brother, sorry for interjecting. I've, I've met president from IPB to uh, Abacha to Abdul Salam to Obasanjo, to Yaradua. The only person I did not meet in public as a sitting president, good luck, who it was severally. Yeah. The I, only person I, I did not meet publicly. No, the the, the, the board of worry. contention So yeah. this is not what I'm, what I'm trying to speak in. All right, let, uh, so, uh, Mr. Felix, let me allow you to conclude. All right, please. See, yeah. Yes, Deji, when you when you use the word I will never ask for a meeting, then somebody like me will begin to ask myself, your activism, what is it then about? You're speaking to power. You're trying to speak for the less privileged. You're trying to speak for 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 things to get better in the country. What better person to speak to than a man in power? So when you say you will never get to see the president, it means therefore this thing is is personal. What is the agenda? If the president asks for you, go there, tell the president what the problem is. It's a man that listen. Look at recently, uh, he, he brought out palliatives. And the media was talking. People were talking about the palliatives. They are not impressed. He, he listened. The next thing he withdraw and said, we're going to look at it. 
I was amazed that people were cruci crucifying him. That means this is a president that is listening. Let's go out and speak. Say what you want. All the right. man is listening to us. Yeah. But to say you will never, then I'm asking myself, then all this activism, speaking, what is it then about? Is it just to get the applause of people or you really want change? If you really want change, meet these people, speak to them, demand something, and see if they will, if they, if they will listen. All right. Let's, let's, Let's let's play our activism. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like like you. No, no. Yeah. You see, you see. Sure, sure, sure. He mentioned my name. He sure. mentioned my name. So I just want to respond. Yeah. You see, basically, all my criticism is on what I believe part time is right. What I believe part time is right. Today, if I see the president, I will give the president utmost respect. Even if I see Asari, whether anywhere, I will still greet him. I will, we can disagree peacefully. Or otherwise, but but one thing that I'll never take a look at. Look at Buari arrested me eleven times. Eleven times. Did I? What personal offense did I commit against Buari? Send me to prison four times. But if I see Buari tomorrow, I will still greet him. See, the reason why, personally, I may disagree with Asari or anybody. The reason why I respect someone like Asari is that anyone that has been to prison like me several times, I will always respect them, whether rightly or wrongly. But let me tell you something. What, what people must always learn to appreciate is that people have the right to disagree with, with you. People have the right to also express themselves. This is the way I'm expressing myself because I feel that the system is not working. Why did I waste my vote on Showare during the presidential election? I wasted my vote on, the, on Showare because I felt that all the political... Like, look at how many insults have they insulted us. Look at all Peter B people. Look at how they were insulting me. You are listening... You are living with me. What kind of name did these people call me? They ethnic profiled me. They just because I said I can't they cannot win. Because I said that the opposition was divided and Tinubu was going to win. What kind of names have I not been called in this country? They said I've been sponsored by Tinubu. I'm the, have I ever met Tinubu before in my life? Will I ever meet him? No. See, the truth about Nigeria is that majority of Nigerians don't like to hear the truth. When, when I see people online insulting people, how many times have I gone to a studio that I see people insulting him? And I wonder, and I'm like, why? I, I, and I, like, I wonder, I, I'm like, why people cannot di disagree with someone without resorting to name calling and insulting? I myself have been a victim severally, but whatever it is we are doing, we are doing it out of conviction. We are doing it because the country is not working. Anybody that tells you today that, that this country is working, the person is deceiving you. Even the president knows that the country is not working. If you look at it critically. We were buying fuel, just like when I started at the, at the beginning of this show. I said, last week I got to the petrol station, and I was missing Buari. In, in my lifetime, will I ever think that I will ever miss someone like Buari? And I said, even as bad as Buari was, under Buari, we were buying fuel for 150-something naira, 170-something naira. Now we're buying fuel at 617. The president should sell the refineries. Uh, if, if the president wants to fully privatize the country, deregulate the, uh, uh, the, the oil sector, he should completely deregulate the oil sector. Nigerians are going through a lot. So the reason why people, people are reacting the way they are reacting is because the country is hard for everybody. We, we all want a country that works. If, if Tinubu succeeds, why will I not want Tinubu to succeed? If, if Tinubu doesn't succeed, will Nigeria succeed? So when people see us because we complain, because we murmur, people think we are bad people. No, we are not, we are not bad people. The reason why we are murmuring and we are complaining is because the country is not good. We want a country. Okay, look at what Asari said about uh, stealing of, of crude oil. Who in the country does not know that what he's saying is the truth? Who, who in the country does not know that what he's saying is the truth? It, uh, when I saw the, 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 the statement of the military, I was just laughing. I'm like, I even posted it. I said, what Asari said is the truth. The people that are behind stealing, so, stealing fuel in this country are the military. So if you, if you don't, if you don't me, mind, if you just, can just give me two Just remember, okay, okay, please, quickly, uh, because uh, we need to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, just, uh, 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 just two minutes. Uh, Elijah, uh, Elijah, Elijah no. just hold on. I'm coming to you, Elijah. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Phillips, just, 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 just quickly. give me two minutes. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Deji, I'm not, I'm not saying you should not disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. My point is, you, you, you'll be doing a great job in, in activism. And I'm saying, don't use one like, I can never see the president. It becomes something personal. I'm saying if you should go and see the president and be able to speak to him. We are lucky we have a president who will listen to you. And I'm glad. I, I know you'll be happy when you speak to the president and he takes advice and he gets you on board. This is I told Shore, and I've said it so much time. And the next time I see Shore, I'm going to have to let him know that we have to do this thing so differently. We cannot just speak outside and take it personal. Our, our voice is not going anywhere. 
I'm speaking now as a youth. One of the reasons I've joined APC is to be able to sit on the table with these men and be able to bring input. So we need to be able to get on board. If we really, otherwise, we're just going to make noise on social media. We'll get old and nothing change. Let's get to them. See the president. The, Mr. Deji, I'm requesting, I'm pleading with you. Book an appointment. Go and see the president. Speak to him. You'll be amazed the kind of man that he is. He will listen to you. And give him advice. Give him suggestions. All he right. will listen to you. All right. You know, let's not... You are, you are a youth. I'm a youth. And this is what we are fighting mm -hmm. for. The other day I stood on show. I said I would love to see somebody like Show become uh, EFCC boss. Why did I say it? I know the kind of person he is. But he will never get it when you, all you do is just social media and crucify this man. We need to be able to let, when you are hitting the nail on the head, hit it very well so you can get what you desire. Otherwise, the nail will burn, yet you will not get what you desire. All That's right. just what I'm trying to say. Let me allow uh, Elijah Sari to Kuba to wrap up for us. Uh, uh, Elijah, what, what are your final thoughts on the podcast tonight? Yes, I, I want to say that uh, uh, let's take Saudi Arabia for example. Mohammed bin Salman came to power as crown prince and he went out, he collected $1.7 trillion from people who have corruptly enriched themselves. I agree with it that the country is not working. I travel a lot and I see things. And when I come back, I ask myself, what is the oil being sold in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in the United Arab Emirates, in Bahrain, in Oman? Are they different oil or in Iran? Iran that has been under sanction since 1980, after the Iranian Revolution to today. Iran is one of the major military hardware suppliers Network in the world today. Okay. Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, Iran, Iran, your, your today network is concentrating. Yes, but we have, yeah, 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 we can hear you. Network, yes. Iran has developed the third. I'm sorry, your yeah, network keeps going off and on. Uh, let's see if we can conclude this uh, show in just about uh, the next five minutes or thereabout. I have a few people here, but I'm sorry, we might not be able to take more than three responses from our Twitter spaces today because we need to quickly conclude. Uh, I have uh, Mazi Inaimeka at Emmy Promise 71. I'd like you to just hit the nail on the head. 30 seconds is what we have. If you can if you can come up. Your mic is on. go to jail last week last week or so you treated a city governor what are you saying exactly asari please i'm not here to battle with, but what i'm trying to tell you is that the what is happening in south is he contributed 80 percent of what is going on in south east because i remember when you are dancing around asari uh, Al de Carlo, praising him telling us that you do not be, you do not believe you want nigeria the video clip is is everywhere you threaten Nigeria that if they try to arrest you, that Nigeria is going to go down. You did that. Why are you coming here now to say all of this as if that we didn't know what is happening in this country? Two weeks ago, you 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 you, you are training a, a people as a as ordinary citizen. Ordinary citizen like me, you training the people, giving them guns. Where did you get that gun from? AK-47 for crying out loud. Because of you are working with the city government now, people cannot talk. You are saying all of this. Please, I, I hear the mic. Thank okay. you so much. Let me let me get. Uh, Asari is an idiot. 
Asari is an idiot. Sorry, Why please. Should he be doing all these threatening people's life? He's an idiot. Asari is an idiot. Sorry, you cannot use that kind of language, please. I'm sorry. I don't know why people cannot just I don't know. You cannot use that kind of language. I'm sorry, others. please. Sorry. Uh, Olu at Emperor 24. You have 30 seconds, please. So far, as I've been listening uh, since the start of this uh, space. Uh, I've listened to Azari came last. Uh, DG, I would like to go straight to the uh, ministerial list uh, that you just mentioned. Uh, that is more consigned the nation now than the grievances they are having uh, among themselves. Uh, as for the names, uh, what is really missing uh, within the names, uh, I was expecting more youths, more youths, because uh, the, the people that have been saying that, the, <clears throat> the people that the list, the names, it's just a recycling, 75% percent, uh, percent of recycling names that uh, we have known them before. We know the antecedents that they have done in different states. So uh, I think uh, that list of attain is not a promised list that uh, anything good, like 100% is going to come out from it. So uh, for me, it's not uh, giving, uh, giving me personally, that's my own opinion, that's not giving me 100% guarantee that uh, they're going to uh, do something. Then I suspect one thing that is, it seems like uh, President Tinubu really, the people that really <coughs> trust around him, that is the people that he put on that list. Well, uh, uh, that is my own opinion uh, concerning this list of uh, ministerial lists. Talking about uh, answer the, the Kubo uh, talks, uh, I will not be dwell on that because I do not have my own fat with me. I don't have the threat uh, video. I don't have anything. So yet and say of the talk, I don't want to contribute to that. Right. Uh, having, uh, yeah, I don't want to let, contribute let's to get, that. Yeah, so, let's get some other people to, uh, your 30 seconds. Let me get Mr. Prolific in. At David's uh, the one on Twitter. Uh, you have 30 seconds, please, your, your, your views. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shil. Um, I'm so glad to have this opportunity. Thank you for the beautiful job you're doing. Excellent moderation tonight. Uh, <clears throat> so when you were talking with, and I'm sorry, I just may not be speaking directly to the topic. This is something else that is quite dear to my heart. Uh, <clears throat> while you were speaking to the chair, board chairman of uh, Iaga Africa yesterday, it struck me that uh, <clears throat> the Electoral Act was Part of the work done on the electoral act was done by Aristotle Atoye. He's not someone I've met personally, but uh, I followed his work and listening to you on our politics today, on pol uh, Sunday politics, I, you give him so much credit and I believe he deserves it. And you know, <clears throat> this morning again, while I was having breakfast, it struck me that to even ask after his widow and uh, children, but I never knew I'd be having the opportunity to speak with our uh, uh, DG tonight, and um, this is from a very solemn and honest act. DG, please, how is uh, his widow and children doing? They are okay. Uh, the children, the children come to my house regularly to spend weekends. So they were in my house last weekend. They are they are doing very well, and the widow is very fine. I was still uh, talking with her on the phone yesterday. The family is. I'm glad to hear well. that. I never knew I'll have the opportunity to talk to you tonight. It's just how. Mm -hmm. Things are attracted to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, my brother. And our AC goes out to our very lovely brother, um, uh, Aristotle. That's why he, it's uh, interesting. A few days before he, he passed, he was on my program. He was coughing. I never knew that was the last time I was going to see my friend. Uh, but let me get the last person to, to, to speak on this uh, podcast today. Sadly, uh, Adeni Ajibade at Adeni Ajibade 9. Uh, you, you got the, the sort to speak. Uh, and you have the mic on now. 30 seconds, please. Thank you so much, uh, DG. I, I was just going to ask uh, Astari, uh, the company, the security company he said he's got, I was going to ask him when, when was it licensed to operate and when did it start operations in Nigeria as a whole? Then secondly, I'll go to um, um, DG as well. DG is a respected person. I respect his views, his, his insight, and his very knowledgeable analysis. However, he should learn that we have a product that we are after, and the product is a better society. 
you're you know attacking like you know too forceful will not pass the message across a little you know when you're talking to asari i doubt if asari will take those points as germane as they are i doubt if you'll be able to take it because you were you were a bit too forceful a bit calm and you know pass your points across to him so he will take those points and he'll be a better person and again to asari when he compared himself to wagner i've never seen wagner boss you know all over the place on social media we are the a security outfit of that nature is oftentimes subtle and even the media will probably be you know drifting information from them from behind the circles not you know not directly to him lastly uh my uh able host uh deji please do not let your space even when you go on on your seven o'clock uh, show it's like we are getting a bit of uh, rowdiness and uh, you know a, a bit more calm and a bit more control will do thank you thank you so thank much you for brother. the criticism i appreciate i appreciate uh, alaji your network is just dancing uh awilo logomba uh, it keeps pushing you in and out if, if you can hear us now because you will be the person that will will, will send us off this podcast today are you with us now alaji i sorry the kubo Yes, uh, okay, great. thank you very much yeah. for today. Um, I'm talking, I'm discussing with uh, um, Deji today. We're in the same panel discussing issues. Yes, sir. Uh, I've always read his views on issues. I want to clearly say that we must have belief, like the last week I was talking about, uh, believe in the product we are going to sell because we are trying to market this product. I have, I I, I came in contact with Ahmed Bola Tinibu during Abiola's campaign in 1992. And since then we have remained friends and had known him from the time he has spared for governor, from the primaries to becoming governor, etc. And I believe that Ahmed Bola Tinibu has the passion and the patriotism to effect change. I also believe that no matter who is appointed, if the person has this passion and is patriotic, he will. The last speaker uh, asked when my company was incorporated. My company was incorporated in 2012 to do security, uh, uh, provide security services. And that is what we have been doing. We have been providing security services. Now, uh, finally, I want to say that, please, I did not, I will not threaten River State Governor. I am not threatening him. I I will walk. I might not, like Deji said, I might not have to go and meet him, or like the way I told myself, I have no business with Wiki. So I might not go and meet with him, but I will help him because when, there's a, when there is peace, it will enable the environment to attract investors to come into River State, improve the economy of River State. And this will put cash in the hands of River State people and make uh, life easy for the people of River State. Then he was talking about buying 12,600 and something naira. All of us, we know when we are small, there's this adage that says, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. We have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice for a better day. What we want from our government, what we want from the people in government is sincerity. What we want from them is patriotism, committed to the cause of Nigeria. When they are committed to the cause of Nigeria and they are passion driven, I think we'll reach our destination. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. You know, I must commend him again for the, the way he has just ended. You know, this is what I always love. You know, their superior, superiority in ideas. You know, it, it, we, we may disagree, we may not be on the same camp, we may not always align. But once I, I haven't contextually listened to him, and listen to the submission of everything he has said. I just have to give it to him. You know, we may, we, we, uh, just like I always tell you, Sheo, the fact that I'm disagreeing with you today 
or I'm praising you today does not mean me and you we are friends. And does not mean tomorrow. It's not like when people, when I criticize politicians, people say, Ah, but you said so, 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 so thing about the person three, four years ago. I said, ah, My opinion has changed. New facts, new evidence have emerged. When, when I said Peter Obi was a good candidate, I didn't know that he stole money as governor in Anambra until evidence uh, emerged and I saw the evidence. I said, ah, How can you be a chief executive, executive of a state and you divest? Funds from a state into your personal account, and you are also claiming to be a saint. It's better for me to even. Uh, it's better for me yeah. to deal with people that are not saints. Let mm. me know that they are not saints, and for you to be claiming that you are a saint when you are not. So, mm. I really respect him for the, the closing, and just like he has said, he's, he 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 lives in, in in rivers. I think that partnership and that synergy between him and the governor and other critical stakeholders will move the state forward. Mm. Thank you. I must sincerely thank everyone on this uh, podcast today, the GRD and you right activists. Nicholas Felix, uh, APC presidential aspirant in the primaries. Thank you so much indeed. And Alaji Asari Dokuba, who has been known for his views about the Niger Delta region and River State. Thank you so much indeed. It's, it's a good one tonight, everyone. Well, 28 names sent, more to come. The conversation has been about the spread, areas of expertise, track records of the nominees are submitted by my guest tonight on the show. We must check some key boxes in engaging the services of these countries' top officials. Inclusiveness, no square pegs in round holes, patriotism, passion and expertise should be prioritized. Quite an explosive engagement we've had here tonight. And the main topic of the day was almost eradicated. But we are all uh, a good people in a nation and we know that we need to bear our minds about the nature of our country and the development of our of our nation. That said, it is important to thread with caution on issues that may threaten Nigeria's national security. We should desist from hate speech and inflammatory statement. Nigeria is our darling, and like many of our leaders have maintained, Nigeria's unity is not negotiable. negotiable. Thank you all for being part of this important conversation, and I'll see you next time. I'm sure Kimale. Bye-bye. With Shayono Kimbaloy. Mike on podcast for the independent.